Well, that was sad. But guys, my last topic I like to talk about is something I hate talking about. Guys, seeing Shota lose the PBA title against EJ Tackett was bad enough, but guys, I hate talking about this moment. Mitsuro Brandon Tajima. Who is he? He's a heavyweight boxer, and man, oh man, I I supported him when he fought his third fight in November, way back 2022. And when I'm seeing him fight a, like seven times in 2023, demolishing fights after fights after fights, I'm like, this is going to be a great heavyweight. And then he takes on Alexander Jur, a guy from the country – of Romania, and he has 20 wins, 5 losses, and he's lost nothing. He's done for. He was a nobody, and he takes on this guy, and he's a somebody. And guys, before this fight happened, and I went to information, making comments about Tajima and how he should fight more, and then someone in the comments told me that the people are trying to train him to become a bridgeweight fighter, and I thought, dude, red flags were coming in. And I made a comment, I replied to someone's comment, I'll, I'll try to find the future, and I told him, dude, the Bridgeweight title is, is supposed to be for fighters at 200 pounds and 225 pounds in, in WBC. Also, WBA is also an organization in that division, so yeah. And he told him, uh, they're trying to make him lose weight. So I knew something was up. His last fight in October, 252 and three quarter pounds, goes first round knockout. We're in February, March the 31st, 2024. He's 224 pounds. Guys, I did not see this footage in full, and I'm not planning on watching this footage. Scorecards ended 79 to 72. All three judges give it to Alexander. This Japanese Mitsuro is done for. I, I, I unsubscribe to him. I just, I'm upset right now that they decided to move him to Bridgeway. I think Brandon Tajima was better off staying in the heavyweight at 250 pounds. He was losing a little bit of weight in his time, but dude, Bridget weight, no, he should have stayed in heavyweight. He should have stayed where he was. And they, the Japanese people ruin another heavyweight championship in boxing. But guys, I'm upset about this. It's so frustrating why they went with it. You know what guys? I'm done talking about this. I, I I've made I've I've talked too much about Asian today, and I I don't want to be too much of it. I've I've been too mean to them too much all right, lately right now. So you know what? I'm just gonna talk about some other topic right now, just for the heck of it. And you know what, guys? Screw it, screw it. I'm done. I'm done. You know what, guys? How about this? I'm gonna talk about why I'm a YouTuber and why I started because. Hey, we only have like um, about several or so minutes until this podcast is over. So how about I talk about it now? So guys, why am I a YouTuber? Why did I decide to become a YouTuber and so? Well, guys, technically, this is what my story started out to be. Guys, back around the time when I was a little kid, uh, my father showed me so many movies. Even my mother did, but technically my father had a lot of movies. And, and every time I saw movies like Home Alone, Major League Baseball, or even... Star Wars, Star Wars for that matter, or even even WWE, I was so touched into those things. Guys, I really wanted to be like Bob Uecker, you know, the 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 the, the batter, the Mr. Baseball guy, uh, the announcer for the the Milwaukee Braves, Harry Doyle, the you know guy playing Harry Doyle for Major League Baseball. I always wanted to be like him. It's like there's a lot of people that love that guy so much that I wanted to be like him one day and I still want to do something like him being a good guy and then I come across other people like the Hulk Hogan and then Stone Cold Steve Austin and WWE and John Cena Mr. McMahon and even Mr. McMahon got me more interested due to his mic promos and the way he talks and the way he walks and I always wanted to be like him and be this heelish person and I always wanted to be like that and all of a sudden guys I watch Storm Chasers the Discovery Channel had a new show, Storm Chasers, in 2007, and I was hooked on watching that show. I was so hooked when I actually saw the show, I wanted to be a storm chaser. And then I, when I watched the Boston Red Sox win their World Series in 2007, I wanted to be just like David Ortiz. I wanted to be like Big Poppy. I wanted to be like Manny Ramirez or, or Kevin Euclid or Jason Veritek, Jonathan Papelbon, Jason Vey. <laughs> I wanted to be like those people, like a great team that are remembered, and I always wanted to be like them. 
And then in 2010, I came along and Nickelodeon was already dying away from me. iCarly was destroying everything and other stuff. So then we lost cable TV in 2011 and we never had it since. Then 2012, I had YouTube. And I've had it for now 12 years and I've had it ever since and I've enjoyed it ever since. Well, to be honest, we did we did use internet and McDonald's and other places in 2010 where there was internet somewhere is where we did. So I was hooked on to internet in 2009 and there's other things I went through inappropriately, but still eh, nothing much, much to talk about there. But you get what I mean. I was hooked on to these things so much and I really wanted to be involved with it so much. And then in 2014 is when I met these great YouTubers, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye. I met PewDiePie in 2013, interesting. I started watching him playing the video game, The Walking Dead, Season 2. Didn't know there was much thing. And then, well, Telltale Games got me hooked up into that. And I wanted to be just like them. And then around the time, I moved on. And guys, the only thing I was so jealous about them, about Markiplier and Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, and their friend Cinnamon Toast is when they went to PAX Prime East in 2015 and I watched a video, their one hour video of them together and PewDiePie dressed in a red dress and they're playing Cards Against Humanity. I know, and Cards Against Humanity, sorry for talking too much. I wanted to be there with them. I wanted to be like that. I wanted to be part of that no matter what the cost was. And then so he moved on, we moved on. And 2016, they did it. They also did Mark Part of Friends panel. Mark, Jack, Bob, and Wade did theirs. And I, I that was my, my favorite one. I was watching the panels every year in life, and I wanted to be there. I wanted to be part of it. I was seeing other YouTubers like the Paul Brothers, KSI, and then Mr. Beast came in out of nowhere. And then I saw MLP. But, guys, ML, My Little Pony wasn't much of a thing for loving ponies, guys. The reason I became a brony in 20, 2016 from 2021 is because I didn't. I wasn't doing that. I was in love with ponies. I just wanted to be part of a group of people to collab with to dominate to dis- to slaying the world of internet. That's my goal. And it's still my goal to this day. And then if I if I actually slain the internet and be popular like everyone else, if I ever become a NASCAR driver and quit YouTube, because guys, this was my strategy. I watched NASCAR in 2007 when I saw the movie Cars, Disney Pixar. And when I saw Juan Pablo Montoya won his first race in an Xfinity race in Mexico before he won a Sonoma race that same year, I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be like Jeff Gordon. I wanted to be like them. I was in love with so much of this stuff I was watching in my life. Hell, I even saw Walter Ray Williams won a PBA title back in 2009 when he was like this old person out of his prime when I saw I actually saw him on TV when I saw him win his 46 tour title and I was like I want to be like him I want to win more titles like he did I was so hooked up to so much of this stuff that I still never forgot about those great people nice people like Bob Euchre or even like Juan Pablo Montoya and I still haven't forgot about those people since and I wanted to be like them I wanted to be part of that and then ever since I saw and my and guys for everything else the reason I was in the jet Japan mostly in my life is I was I was a little bit interested because I ever since hearing about history about this or that and when I first heard about the band Baby Metal in 2016 due to their second album and I was more interested in listening to that before hearing what Bandmade was I wanted to be part of a community not in the US but part around the world that got me hooked into it ever since and when i saw jake and bake live a streamer that goes to japan a lot i was like dude i want to be with him as well i've watched so much videos of it and that i wanted to be part of that and guys the reason i got into vr chat guys one more other thing the reason i was into vtubers i was never into vtubers i was never into vr chat until 2018. When I first saw VR Chat in 2017 and 2018, it was like boring crap. It was just people doing talk, 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 and there's nothing entertaining until Al Fox Gaming released that video called Big Hamburger Country, nice, nice, nice with this Japanese girl in 2019. I was more hooked into it more than you ever think. And when I was watching YouTubers like Radiant, Chromia, and then I got more into it. And then Rose Doodle came along on Radiant's channel and she got me hooked up onto it more. Guys, from 2020 to 2021, I was trying to download the VR, the VR chat game on my old computer I still have here, but the computer was not, it, it was just, the computer wasn't, the computer just wasn't talking to me. It was just, I was upset that I still haven't loaded the game since, and now VR chat's dead, and I never got into VTubers until 2021 when all V 
VR chat YouTubers, Rose Doodle, Chromia, Radiant, and et cetera, Al Fox Gamer, and a bunch of other people walked away from the internet and they disappeared and some haven't been seen since. When Shy Lily came in 2022, I was more hooked into VR ch- VTubers ever since. I never even know who Akuma Numine is when when they both met again doing a dating video two years ago. So I think when – and then that's when I saw the uh, her other friends and the other friends from Moth Girl, this or that, and Cinder and blah, 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 and Fillion. So I think when you add all those ingredients together, I think I just – I think the reason I was part of it is because I just love the community. I love the support. I liked how much they were gaining on. And I really wanted to be a part of that. And I just hope I do in the future. And it uh, looks like we're about out of time. Uh, my timer is about to be out of time. So, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, I'm just trying to be part of a, of a, of a community until I do. And if I ever become a NASCAR driver, people will say, hey, that guy was a VTuber and now he's a NASCAR championship driver. I think that's what I want to do something. I want to do something like almost like Bob Euchre once did. He he won a world a world series in 1964 with the Cardinals while using a tuba playing in this world series trying to catch foul balls while catching with a tuba. That's legend for Bob Euchre to do that, to become a commentator for 50 years, go to SNL, TV shows, and this. I just guess I just want to be part of that type of stuff like he does and other things from VTubers. And I want to collab and meet those great VTubers. And I want to collab with new people that want to make it like I am. And I just hope I do in the future because at the end of the day, I really want to be a part of that community. And I hope I do. So that's the end of all the podcasts. Thanks for watching. Foxwolf.